Hey everyone, John here, and welcome back to the Toy Box. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you're ready for some Sinnoh Sitting Cuties. Today, I have the Pokemon Center Sinnoh Starter Sitting Cuties plushes. Right here, we have Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. But that's not all. We also have the Revolutions. So we're going to be looking at nine plushes today. It's so big that we have to call it the Sinnoh Starter Sitting Cutie Special. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. First, we're going to go ahead and start things off with Turtwig. Now, whenever I look at the starters, specifically, I like to look at the journey each one takes as you progress with it in the game. With the Turtwig line, we're looking at the concept of a world turtle. Now, a world turtle appears in mythologies around the world as a large tortoise that supports continents or even the entire world on its back. Uh, some Pokédex entries even go as far as saying that some Pokémon will spend their entire lives on a Torterra's back. So let's keep this in mind as we look at the plushes. So first, we're going to go ahead and look at the baby of the of the line, Turtwig. So first, we have Tur Turtwig's face. We have the embroidered eyes. We have embroidered nostrils. Now the mouth is just a line right here. Now the shape of it looks like a beak for a snapping turtle. And you'll see that later in the other evolutions as well. We have a twig up here. I like the way it's done. It has this embroidered border. You can see it from the back. And we have two little leaves up here. So this is just the start of Turtwig becoming a world turtle. Now we can look at the shell. If we look at it from up here, we can see the black edge. Right here, there's a line in the middle with embroidered edges. And then we have a fuzzy brown part right here. This looks a lot like a field that has just been tilled to me. So it's just the beginning of a world turtle. So there's nothing here yet, but there's a lot of potential. Now looking at the side, we have Turtwig's tail. And then we can see Turtwig's legs right here. We have green and yellow. It looks like the yellow part here is colored in on the green fabric. Uh, the bottom looks fuzzier. Uh, for uh, the paw pads for Turtwig. So we have all four right here. And you can see the legs from each side. Here is Turtwig underneath, the very fuzzy. And then lastly, here are the tags. Here's the first one. And then here are these on the side. There are three of them in total. Now, for the standing test, Turtwig passes the standing test well. It doesn't need any assistance from the wall or any other objects to stand. And as far as firmness, Turtwig is medium. Now remember with the Sitting Cuties plushes, most of the time you're going to get a medium uh, plush as far as firmness goes. Some of them will be harder, but uh, most of them will be medium. Turtwig is medium, and the pellets are located around right here on the underside where Turtwig can sit down. So, so far that's Turtwig. That's the very first in the line. So we're going to go ahead and let Turtwig evolve now. So he's going to evolve and we're going to bring in Grodel. This is the second evolution. So not a baby anymore, but not quite the world turtle either. Somewhere in the middle. So let's go ahead and take a look at Grodel. So first we'll start with the face. We have embroidered eyes and nostrils just like with Turtwig. Um... We're starting to see um, some horns develop here, kind of like an ankylosaurus. That was the first thing I thought of whenever I started seeing this line. And right here, the mouth has the same shape uh, that shows like a snapping turtle shell. It's just a little more developed this time. Now, we can take a look at the back. Now, the back is interesting because I'm not sure what this shell is supposed to be. I guess it's um, it could be... Um, just a hard shell that a turtle would have and we just have the the part we have a root coming out here This is soft. This has a line right here, and then we have two patches two trees It's either two trees or shrubs or it's a collection of trees and shrubs that are have started growing on Grodel's back Now these right here. I love how fuzzy they are. It makes it look like there's a lot of leaves in here and They're pretty soft too much softer than the rest of the plush so that's a nice uh, detail. So here's one on this side. And you can see the other side right here. Now, Grodel's tail is a lot bigger. Um, so, and it uh, part of the shell comes up over it here too. 
So you can see it right here. Oh, and one last part of the shell is you see the lines sewn in all around the back right here. You can see them right there, along with the edging. Here it is from the other side. Now let's take a look at the legs. Now the legs are just like turtwigs. We have green and then we have yellow right here. This yellow is, looks like it's colored on here. And here's the bottom. The only difference is now you see some little claws. And it's the same on each leg. So let's take a look at all the legs. Now, at first I thought that the legs are kind of uh, awkward. But then you have to remember this is a sitting cutie. So it's Grodel's going to be in a sitting position like this. So it's not going to just be a standing position. And here is Grodel from underneath. We just have a line right here. Now, here are the tags. We have tag number one right here. And then we have these little tags here on the side. Let's go ahead and sit down, Grodel, sit Grodel down right here. Now, Grodel also passes the standing test very easily. It doesn't need any objects of the wall to stand on its own. And as far as firmness, Grodel is a, a medium firmness, like a stuffed medium. And the trees on the side here are pretty soft. So, and then now the the beans are also on the bottom around the lower legs, like kind of like how it was with Turtwig. So it can sit pretty easily. That's where the center of gravity is. But anyway, this is Grodel. So now it's time for Grodel to evolve now and get to our final form, and that's Torterra. So now we are on the final evolution. This is the final step to have our world turtle. So let's go ahead and take a look at this plush. So first, I like the, the detail for the eyes right here. Um, very detailed, and they're embroidered right here. Now, one thing about the final evolutions for sitting cuties is that because you're trying to keep the scale of the Pokemon the same, remember, I like my details. You're trying to keep all the details intact, but the plush has to be much smaller. So all the details are going to be smaller. So it's kind of hard to see the beak now. But the beak is still there if you look closely. You can see the shape um, right here and sewn in. Um, we have some lines on the head right here. And then we have two horns on the side. This is what really reminds me of Ankylosaurus. Um, so I always thought of it as a combination of the world turtle and an Ankylosaurus. Uh, except that we don't have the tail. So Ankylosaurus has a big club on its tail for hitting... It's enemies, but we don't have that here with Torterra. So let's take a look at the at its back. So there's a lot going on here. So first, I want to look at this tree. Because the tree, I think, is one of the main parts of the shell. We have the roots coming out here. These look like double pieces of fabric that come out. And they're attached to the tree. And they're also attached to the back right here. We have one, one right here. We have another one. And if we turn it to the back, we have a third one coming out here. Um, I love the details with this. The only thing I don't like is I don't like how some of the strings, uh, some of the threads come out here. But I don't think there's much you can do with that. You can kind of tuck them out of the way. Now, the tree trunk here is pretty firmly stuffed. And while the the trees themselves, again, they're fuzzy, just like with Grodel. I like it. It makes it look like there are a lot of leaves. It's a nice detail. The trees here are soft. And the, the trunk is firm. So I think that's a really good detail, too. And then now we have the, the horns. So we have more horns on here, which reminds me of Ankylosaurus. Um, I think these are white with the, with the green part colored in. I believe that's what it is. So we have three horns right here. You can see them from the side. And this is how they look from the, from the top. And then we have some boulders on the side. These are all separate pieces too. They're sewn in. And as far as the coloring on the shell, you can see there is a lot of green and a lot of browns right here. There's mostly green on this side, and it's mostly brown on the other side. And of course, with the shell, we have a, a white lining that goes all the way around. So there we go. And then um, the legs. So legs for Torterra are much different. So they're brown now instead of green and yellow. And we have white stones coming out instead of claws. Um, so we have a stone here, we have a stone in the back. So each leg has this, so it has one in the front and one in the back. And here you can see it from the other side. And then lastly, here is the underneath, underside of Torterra. We see the lines for the shell. 
And then we see a little bit more for the mouth right here. Um, here are the tags. Here's the first one. And then here's the second tag. Just like that. Now, to sit it down here, we can see that Torterra easily passes the sitting test. It doesn't need any assistance from the objects or the wall. And for pellets, they're all in the back right here towards the back near the tail. So it can balance well while it's sitting. So anyways, let's go ahead and bring them back together real quick. We have Torterra there. We have Grodel. And we have Turtwig. So overall, I like the designs of all three Pokemon. They're all true to the designs in the games. And I think they got all the details just right. So there we have it. This is the, the Turtwig line. And now that we've seen our world turtle, it is time to transition over to our fire type, Chimchar. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, we have Chimchar, our fire starter. Now, the fourth generation does like its myths. We saw the Turtwig line based on the concept of the world turtle. The Chimchar line seems to be based on the character Sun Wukong, who was one of the main characters of the Chinese novel Journey to the West. I've also seen versions of this character appear in other stories and video games. So let's keep this character in mind while we look at these plushes. So first we have the baby of the group, Chimchar. And let's take a look at the plush. Now Chimchar to me looks a lot like a baby macaque. I've seen other people say that Chimchar looks like, the Chimchar line looks like different types of monkeys. But for me, I see macaques most of all when, I'm look at, when I look at uh, these Pokemon, especially with Chimchar. So first we have the big ears, and there we have an embroidered red part here. We have big eyes, which are embroidered, they look very nice. Um, the eyebrows and the nose and the mouth are also embroidered as well. We have this nice fire-looking border right here. And then of course in the top, we have the hairstyle, which is, looks like a flame, which is a nice touch. Uh, we can see the head from the other side. You see a little white part come on the bottom here. And then most of Chimchar's face is white. Now, going to the body, we have this little flame pattern here. This is the first sign that I thought of that I would, the first marking that made me think of a mythological monkey. Um, we have Chimchar's arms. We can see the hands here. There are lines sewn in, so you can see the individual fingers. Here's the other arm, so that you can see. Now, the arms are both stuffed pretty firmly. Um, I would say that Chimchar is one of the uh, Sitting Cuties plushes. It's an exception that is kind of a hard, uh, a, fir a very firm plush. We have the legs on this side. Well, they're orange. here. The leg is orange with uh, white feet. Same thing on this side. Orange with white feet. Well, maybe it's more yellowish than white. This right here. When you take a look at the back, we have Chimchar's flame tail. This is the part, why, this is why I think that Chimchar looks more like a macaque, uh, more like a pigtail macaque than other monkeys, because other monkeys would have a long, a long tail, while Chimchar just has this flame. Um, we have the tag right here. And we have three tags. Right here. Now, for the sitting test. Chimchar passes the sitting test or the standing test very easily, doesn't need any assistance from the wall or other objects. And the pellets are right down here on uh, Chimchar's uh, lower half that helps it keep its balance. And that is our baby monkey. This is the first step for to get to our monkey king. So we're going to go ahead and let Chimchar evolve. And here we go. Now we have the second stage, Monferno. So let's go ahead and take a look at this plush. So Monferno is kind of like the, the middle stage between the baby macaque and Sun Wukong, the monkey king, in the final evolution. Um, so Monferno here, we have the we start having this crest right here, this blue crest. The eyes look a little more hardened, um, not as friendly as Chimchar's is. Um, we have big ears still, just uh, with the lines sewn in here. Uh, we have the, the mouth here. The mouth is embroidered, so is the nose. And we have embroidered teeth right here, so we can see the teeth now. Um, the hairdo is uh, not as pronounced as Chimchar's, but it's still there. It looks like a flame. The whole head looks like a flame shape here. 
we have a white collar. So this is the beginning of the, I guess, of the the armor design that we would see in Infernape. We're beginning to see it here in Monferno. We have a collar right here. On the belly, It's a, this is a tan-colored belly. We have this uh, flame mark right here as well. If we look at the arms, we have gold armbands right here. So we have a gold armband right here. And then we have an, uh, an orange arm. We have, um, this is a tan uh, skin colored uh, fingers. Then we have a, a, pop a pop pad right here uh, for the palm of this hand. Same thing on the other side. You turn it around here, you see the, the golden band here. Now the legs, the legs are a bit shorter than I thought they would be for, for this plush. I think that's the only flaw with the design of the plush is the legs aren't a little bit longer as the arms. So we have orange legs. We have little uh, bits coming out just so you can see like the fur ending and the, just the fur ending for the legs. We have the fingers pretty well defined here. There's no palm prints on, on here, so you don't see that on that side. You can see, take a look on both sides. And then lastly, here we have the tail. We have a red mark going all the way around. And then we have a long tail that comes out with a flame at the end. Kind of like Charmander. So, and then of course we have the tags right here. So here's a tag for the middle evolution. And here are the other tags. So now, Monferno is also kind of a, of a, of a firm plush. So more on the firmer side than other sitting cuties. And I think it's just because of how skinny it is. And definitely, um, as far as the evolution of the Monkey King character, um, Monferno gains the fighting type. So it's beginning to learn. It's beginning to become a hardened fighter. Um, you can see its pose whenever you're playing with it in the game. It's already in a fighting stance. So it's it's grown a lot from it being a baby. Now, for the plush itself, sitting standing test, it passes it pretty easily. doesn't need any assistance from the wall or other objects. And all the pellets are right here in its stomach and right here by the tail. So it helps keep its balance very easily. So that was Monferno. So that is the middle stage. Now it is time to get to the, the final evolution. So Monferno is going to go ahead and evolve again. And now we have Infernape. So this is the final evolution of the Chimchar line. And this definitely looks like uh, the Wukong um, the, the Sun Wukong character. Uh, my wife saw it right away, and uh, I've seen it since I was a kid as well, that this definitely looked like a mythological monkey. So let's go ahead and take a look at the plush. So there are a lot of details in this plush. It's uh, one of my favorites out of the the evolutions for for Diamond and Pearl. Um, this, is the, this is the starter I usually use. Uh, I like how strong Infernape is. And it, I guess it does take after um, the myth just in how strong the, the Pokemon is. So here we have the, the embroidered eyes. We have this crest over here with a second white crest on the eyes for the fur on the face. Uh, the face, is, it looks like the face is uh, orange here. We have long ears. And then we have a large flame pattern on the back of its head. So this is where, this is one of the parts that made it look like the Monkey King to me because of this hairstyle. Um, we can look at the arms. Now the arms, we have these, um, these armor plates right here. These look very mythological to me. <laughs> I don't know what other way to describe it. But um, we have these plates right here on the arms. And we have blue fingers that are pretty well defined. We have uh, these claws. It looks like cl orange claw marks right here. We have the arms. There's a bit of fur that uh, is actually detailed right here. And you can see the other arm here. Just so you can see it has those same details. The chest has this flame pattern coming on each side. To it looks like it forms an armor. And this white suit, it looks like a, a suit uh, of armor as well. Um, the legs, we have a plate right here on each side. We have a, a flame plate there. Looks like we have boots. We can see the fingers of the toes. There's five toes. Oh, that's five fingers as well. And then we can see the, the fur on the bottom. So there's a lot of detail on these feet. So I'll go ahead and show you the other one as well. That way you can see everything. 
And then of course the tail, the tail doesn't have as much detail, but all it is is just the, the orange tail here. Um, you can see in the back we have a an embroidered, uh, fully embroidered golden stripe right there. And then we have, of course, the, the white. We have the fur outlines right here. You can see them on the back as well. So it's a full suit of armor for, full um, suit of armor for Infernape. So let's take a look at the tags. So we have this tag right here. And then we have the three tags right here. They're kind of blocked by this section right here, but you can still see them here. That's how it looks. Now, the standing test. Infernape does have a little bit of a harder time, but it still fairly easily balances itself, so it passes the standing test. It doesn't need any assistance from the wall or any other objects in order to sit. Now, as far as firmness, Infernape is also very firm, so the entire Chimchar line are very firm plushes. Um, the pellets are all right here in the legs and the lower half near the tail. There aren't that many, but um, it doesn't really need uh, it doesn't have it doesn't really need a lot of help balancing, so it's fine like that. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and line them up. So we have our our Monkey King Pokemon right here. So there is the Infernape line or the Chimchar line. So now that we've seen our Monkey King, we have one last starter to go, and that is our water type starter. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Piplup line next. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, lastly, we have our water type starter, Piplup. Now this one was easy for me. I read a lot of Greek myths back in the day. So when I saw the trident on Napoleon's head, as well as the name combining Emperor and Napoleon together, I really just thought of Poseidon. This is the Greek god of the sea and the king of the oceans. So it made a lot of sense that this is what the Piplup line, the Piplup line is based off of. So let's keep that in mind while we take a look at the plushes. So first we have the baby, this Piplup. So we have some embroidered eyes right here. It's kind of hard to see because the blue is kind of dark, but there is a blue and black part. Looks very cute. We have a beak right here. We have a little crown right here. Uh, the edge is embroidered. Uh, the rest of the head is dark blue. We have a little collar that comes along in the back right here with some uh, feathers sticking out. And this uh, continues over here to this little collar right here. Um, it looks like we have these two dots that are embroidered right here to make it seem like a royal suit, like a prince suit here. Um, Pip Piplup's wings are kind of are small and they're stuffed right here light blue and we have Piplup's feet we have the toes spread out right here here we go not quite talons but they're just little toes you can see them from the side and then of course we have the tag mine got a little bit damaged here and then we have the tags right here see mine got folded just like that <laughs> now, as far as sitting, um, Piplup uh, passes the sitting test pretty well, the standing test. It doesn't need any assistance from objects or the wall to sit. Now, all the, the beans, there are quite a few. They're right on the bottom on the underside right here, so it really helps balance it out. And there we go. That is Piplup. So... Not quite royalty yet. It believes it's royalty. It's not a king yet. It already thinks it's one. Um, but we're going to go ahead and see it grow. So we're going to go ahead and let Piplup evolve. So now we have the second stage. This is the evolution Prinplup. Now you have to forgive me. I'm having a lot of trouble saying Piplup and Prinplup. So I might mess it up a few times here. Now we have the second stage, which is Prinplup right here. Now it has taken its pride to the ex the next level because Prinplup is the Pokemon that specifically cannot live with others of its own kind. According to the Pokedex, each one in the group will think it's the most important one in the group and they will all fight amongst each other. So that's why they all have to live separately. Now that's pretty crazy. But it leads a solitary life. Now, um, let's take a look at the plush. 
Now the eyes are a little bit meaner. It doesn't really, it's not really, it doesn't look as friendly as Piplup does. But we have embroidered eyes right here. You can see the other side. We have a beak here that actually continues up here and to become a crest. This is just the makings of that trident. So it's an intermediate step between um, Piplup and Empoleon. So most of it's dark blue. We have a light blue face right here. We have a little tie. It looks like a tie. Now, if you, if you remember Empoleon, Empoleon, Empoleon does have a tie that comes down. So Printplups has this embroidered piece right here. We have these little patches, which are like, again, like a uniform shirt that royalty would wear. Um, we turn it around, you can see the, the feathers continue down to the bottom. So this is all dark blue, and it continues into the tail. Um, the wings... Um, the wings are all dark blue. We have little edges here. Those are light blue. If you look at the hands here, at the edges, the tips of the wings, you can see an embroidered edge right here, which is pretty nice. Here's the other side. You can see that here on the underside of the wing. Now, remember with these wings, they're, they're attached right here, but they're also sewn in in the bottom right here, to midway towards the bottom. So don't lift the arm up too high or else you might tear that stitch. Um, for the feet, they're just like piplups, just the talons, the talons are growing a little bit more. So you actually have separated toes here. You can see the other side right here. And then here's the underside. Now let's take a look at the tag. Here is the one side. Here's the other side for print plup. And we have the three tags right here. Now for the standing test, print plup passes the test perfectly. It doesn't need the wall or any other objects to assist. And all of the uh, the beans are right here on the bottom. Now, print plup is a bit more firmer. It's on the, a bit on the firm side as far as the the stuffing goes. Piplup is a lot softer. Piplup is more medium. Print plup is firmer. So there we go. So that is our intermediate evolution between Piplup and Empoleon. So now we're going to go ahead and go to the final evolution. So we're going to go ahead and let Primplup evolve real quick. So here we go. Uh, we now have Empoleon. So here it is, the final stage. So Empoleon now has become the king of the sea. Um, so it just matches just like Poseidon. And we're at the final stage. So let's go ahead and take a look at this plush. And there are a lot of details to look at here. So first of all, we have the, the part that stands out the most is this crown right here, which is really the beak. So the beak is right here, and it looks like it's a, um, not a piece of felt. I'm not sure what type of material this is, but it looks like it might be felt combined with another material, dual layered. And so it come, it folds out from the beak all the way back here. Now, the hard part about this um, is that it, bend, it kind of bends on its own, so you kind of have to mold it the way you want. And that's how I do it. Um, and they're attached on the sides right here. You can see it here. I don't like this little string that comes out, so I try to tuck it in. Uh, but sometimes it just, it'll just come out whenever it wants. And I don't really want to cut anything, because I don't want to damage the plush. Now we have this blue part right here on the forehead that's embroidered. You can see that it goes along with the eyes. And you can see from the back of the head, we have this. We have these two spots in the back. And then now... Uh, Empoleon has fins, so we have this fin that comes out. I'm not sure, it looks more like a fin than a tail, but it's probably the tail. And then we have a collar right here, a blue collar, and um, it comes down to this tie. Now, this is a different material than the rest of it. If I bring it up, you can see up close, you can see that it has a different texture right here than the rest of the plush. And it looks like it's dual layered, and there's no stuffing inside, so it's just hollow. But it folds up like that to make like a collar and a tie. Now this shirt right here looks kind of like a, a bib, but it looks like the the type of I'm, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's like an attachment to the shirt, like a, a collar that a lot of the aristocrats wear. So it looks like this is the pattern that we get here for the front of Empoleon. The rest of the plush is black, so you can see that we're turning it around. Now, the wings have a lot of detail, so the wings are much softer than the rest of the plush. The plush altogether is medium, uh, medium stuffed, 
So it's just like Piplup, not quite as fir not as firm as Prinplup. Um, these wings are very soft, and they're black. They have blue edging. So this blue is the same material as the the tie and the tail back here. Um, we have three claws right here, so as you can see, so that uh, Empoleon can grab onto things. You can see the other fin or the other uh, flipper, just so you can see both sides. And then lastly, we have the feet. So now these are fully webbed feet. So these feet are fully developed now. You can see them from the side. We have little black fur or feather pieces coming over here so that you can see the detail. And here's the other side. And there we go. So here's the underside of Empoleon. And now we can look at the tags. So we have this one here. And then we have the three tags that come out like this. Now, for the test, the standing test, Empoleon um, passes the sitting test, the sitting standing test, it doesn't need any assistance from objects or the wall in order to stand. Um, it does have a little bit of a weird posture. It looks more like it's challenging you, like it's it's leaning forward instead of uh, more like this. It's like, like, like this, it's like it wants to fight. But that's just how my plush is. I don't know if other plushes are like that as well. But uh, anyway, this is our um, our final evolution. So um, Piplup has evolved from a baby penguin who just has a lot of pride to an actual king of the ocean. So let's go ahead and bring them all back together. Here's Prinplup and here's Piplup. And there we have it. This is the Piplup line. So that is it for, we've gone through all three of our starters, so let's go ahead and bring everyone back together. Well, this has been the Sinnoh Starter Sitting Cutie Special. I had a lot of fun showing all these plushes to you guys and talking about the journey we go through with each one. Which starter here is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to add any of these to your collection, I'll put links to Pokemon Center in the description. Now, the pricing is a little different. At the time of filming, the base and middle evolutions are all going for $10.99, but the final evolutions are $12.99. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys this week. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, rate, subscribe, and don't stop playing.